Today, we're going to show you how to remove and replace the upper and lower gas springs on a Garmin Force trolling motor. We will start with the lower gas spring. First, place the trolling motor in the stowed position. Using a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, remove the screws that secure the lower gas spring clevis to the lower link of the mount. Place these screws somewhere safe, as they will be reused. Lift the lower gas spring clevis off the safety rod. Next, using a number 0 Phillips screwdriver, remove the screw set that secures the gas spring pin to the shaft stabilizer on the mount. Slide out the gas spring pin and lift up on the gas spring to remove it. Now, place the end of the replacement gas spring into the shaft stabilizer on the mount. Slide the gas spring pin into the shaft stabilizer through the end of the gas spring until it is flush with the edge of the shaft stabilizer. Install the set screw into the shaft stabilizer to secure the gas spring pin. Then, place the lower gas spring clevis on the lower link of the mount, fitting it over the safety rod. Using a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, install the screws that we saved previously to secure the lower gas spring clevis to the lower link of the mount. Now, we will move on to the upper gas spring. First, we will want to disconnect the force trolling motor from power. Next, using a number 1 Phillips screwdriver, remove the single screw that secures the upper tab of the cable bracket to the mount base, and then remove the bracket. Make sure to keep these as we will reuse them. Using a 3mm hex bit or wrench, remove the four screws that secure the two brackets to the mount on both sides of the cable channel. Make sure to keep these as we will also be reusing them. Next, pull the power cable out of the channel on the side of the mount. Disconnect the transducer cable from your chart plot. Then, pull the transducer cable out of the channel. Once we have removed the power cables, we will disconnect the upper link of the mount. Place the motor in the deploy position, making sure not to damage the trolling motor on a trailer or the ground. Remove the upper pin from the steering servo housing. and pivot the upper link away. Make sure to not let the housing rotate forward, as this can cause the motor to hit a trailer or the ground, causing damage. Remove the bushings from the upper holes in the steering servo housing. Place these in a safe location, as we will reuse them later. Now, using a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, remove the two screws that secure the lower gas spring clevis to the lower link of the mount. Lift the upper gas spring clevis off the safety rod. Next, using a number 0 Phillips screwdriver, remove the set screw that secures the gas spring pin to the shaft stabilizer on the mount. Then, slide out the gas spring pin and lift up on the gas spring to remove it. Now, place the end of the replacement gas spring into the upper gas spring arm. Slide the gas spring pin into the shaft stabilizer through the end of the gas spring until it is flush with the edge of the upper gas spring arm. Then, install the set screw in the upper gas spring arm to secure the gas spring pin. Place the upper gas spring clevis on the lower link of the mount, fitting it over the safety rod. Then, using a number 2 Phillips screwdriver, install the two screws that secure the upper gas spring clevis to the lower link of the mount. Next, take the bushings that we saved earlier and place them in the upper holes on the steering servo housing. Then, rotate the top of the trolling motor towards the mount base, aligning the holes on the steering servo housing and the mount base. Insert the upper pin into the steering servo housing. Using a 4mm hex bit or wrench, tighten the screw and washer in the upper pin. Then, connect the cable to the display panel on the upper link of the mount. Next, route the transducer cable through the channel on the side of the mount and back to your chart plotter. Then, route the power cable through the channel on the side of the mount. Now, using a 3mm hex bit or wrench, 
Use the screws we saved to secure the two brackets to the cable channel on the mount. Finally, using a number one Phillips screwdriver, and using the screw we saved from earlier, secure the upper tab of the cable bracket to the mount base. And that's it. Thanks for watching. For more help, please visit support.garmin.com.